Okay guys, so in this segment we're going to learn about using your own 3D models and importing them into cubes. Now, it's a very similar process to all the other segments of these tutorials. It's all very uh, repeated type stuff, uh, but that's good because it helps you learn. Uh, what I've done is I've already brought in my 3D model cube. I've control C, control V it, and then I've put it into my customized cubes. So I've got a copy of it down here and I've renamed it to watch, okay? Now, there it is, it's been dragged in, but I'm gonna make another version, because what I want to do is, I'll just control C, control V, and drag it down into my custom cubes. I wanna make another one, and I wanna call it 3D model icons. Because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how you can bring something in from your software to uh, a 3D software package to uh, Element 3D and uh, for this example I'm going to use some social icons I made not so long ago for the first, uh, the first and second versions of this product so um, let's quickly show you the watch first so let's go into the watch composition and you can see I've deleted all the animation that was previously on this so that it doesn't do anything so we're going to start fresh here so let's open, let's close the watch and let's open social icons okay so it's still the watch because we haven't added anything in let's open up group 5 because it says here 3D models on group 5 so we'll go into element, I'm going to open element <coughs> and we're going to delete the watch from uh, group 5 because we don't want it there anymore, we want to bring in our own so if we kill that Okay, so if we kill the watch, and you can see by the way, I've got a guide layer here which just shows you the boundaries. It says it reminds you to switch it off afterwards because you don't want it visible. It just shows you the sort of space we're working within. So if I just switch that off for now, and I'll get rid of the watch. Goodbye. Okay, so how do we bring our own models in here with our own textures and all that good stuff? So in 3ds Max, this is how you do it. Now I can't show you guys for Cinema 4D, I'm afraid, because I don't actually use Cinema 4D. But I imagine it's a very similar process, and it wouldn't take you an awful lot of googling to figure that out. So here we are in Max. I've got my scene open that I was using. Uh, I've got my social icons. They seem to be not quite in the centre of the scene. There they are. Now they are. And we'll just line it up roughly. So it comes in all nice. So, what we need to do is, these are all pre-fragmented because I've fragmented them so that you can break them apart. You don't have to do that, but it's something I've done in my software. Now, what I have to do in 3ds Max, and this may or may not be the case for other software, but you have to make sure that the wireframes for different materials are different colours. So, see on the YouTube logo, there's a white material and a red material. I've set the wire colour to be different on the red material than it is on the white. See, it's green, all the white stuff's green. If I was to select, edit, select by colour and select this, it will select all of them. And if I was to edit, select by colour, which is the wire colour, and select this, it will select all that. So that's just how I'm letting the software know. I want these two things to be separate in Element 3D. I'm telling the software, these are two different materials, make sure you show that. Now for this icon, if I was to grab my material editor in 3ds Max, this icon here uses an, a solid image, a solid image, an image as a texture. So this one has a texture saved in and this one here has two materials. I just want to use these two as a good demonstration because it shows you how you can use this for different things. These are all solid colour so it's less important. Okay, so we're going to grab the YouTube logo, we're going to grab all the objects, they're all separate objects, they've all got their own separate pivot points but we're going to export them all as one OBJ file. To do that we go File, Export, Export Selected and I've just got this one selected and we'll go to, let's put it in Drinks and Smokes, let's go OBJ let's save it as YouTube icon okay save okay 
polygons, quads or triangles. Triangles work well, polygons not so much, quads not so much in Element 3D, so we're going to export triangles. Triangulation is just the type of mesh, um, the way the topology is split up and subdivided. Element likes triangles and it's okay with quads, polys not so much, you might get some strange artifacting going on if you use polys. Um, texture coordinates, yes we want texture coordinates, maybe not so much for this one but certainly for this one it lets Element know uh, how the texture is being applied across the mesh which I've obviously saved in because I've saved my UVWs into this mesh. So uh, that is all looking good, I'm going to export and see it's, it's, it's exporting a hell of a lot of objects, that's because it's exporting all the separate elements that make up this fuller object and that's important because I like to split and use multiple multi-object dispersion effects on my um, on my 3D models so if you do too you might want to follow the same sort of thing and pre-fragment your meshes and we'll do the same thing here we'll select this it would be nice you know in fact no I'll leave it there because I can actually demonstrate something later on so it's actually not on origin okay it's not in the center of my scene but that doesn't matter because I want to show you how we can center it later if you haven't haven't uh, already centered it like I'm just about to not do so export selected this is insta icon okay. and the settings will all be the same yep brilliant export okay so let's close that down okay so we're back in element 3d Let's import those uh, OBJs we just uh, exported from 3ds Max. So we'll go File, Import, Import 3D Object, and we'll start with the YouTube icon. Let's bring it in, load the material. Cool, and OK. And there it is, it's loaded into that group. So it's on group 5, and we can scale it up. Or if we want, we can just click Normalize, and that will make it the right size. Now, see how the alignment is from the model. The uh, origin, origin, the pivot point of the model obviously wasn't dead center. I must not have set it up correctly. All you got to do to center it is just go model center, and boom, there it is. And we're going to scale. We're going to scale it down just a touch so it fits nicely in our cube. And what else do we want to do? Let's rotate it so it's facing the right direction. Now how do you know what direction is the right direction? Uh, you go to front and that's how you know. So I know that this is almost facing the front. There we go. That's good. And then let's do the same thing again, but we're going to do it for the Insta. Uh, we're going to do it for the Insta icon as well. So file import. Three D object, Insta icon cane. Okay, and I'll just switch off the YouTube logo. Now remember, we're going to set it to model center. We're going to tell it to normalize, and we're going to just make it a bit smaller. Okay. Uh, instead of having to reorient that last uh, the Insta icon, just like I did to YouTube, I'll just go down to YouTube, orientation, right click, copy. Go to the Insta icon, orientation, right click, paste. And there we go, same orientation. Saves us just a few seconds there. Okay, so that's brought in the texture as well, naturally, because we've exported it. Now, if it didn't bring in the texture, remember, you can just go down here and you can find it on your computer, like so, just click in there. Now, the mapping, I saved out of 3ds Max. If your model isn't mapped the way you intended it to be, then go in here and you can choose from some sort of basic presets so you can box map it obviously not looking so not looking so great I'm just going to put the mapping back to the way it's actually supposed to be because it looks perfect okay so if I turn off the guide switch off and we click OK okay so now we've loaded that in to the element 3D group 5 what we can do is begin animating it so on the global settings and controls we've got tilt and pan as well as having our controller here so if we were to control it here via I don't know um, there's already actually there's a loop out offset in here which I will change to cycle while we're recording this because that's what it should be okay so there's a loop out offset which means 
um, we want this, I want it to spin just continuously round and round and round, right? So, at frame, I don't know, 200, and, no, let's go all the way, 448, I want it to do one revolution, so we're going to go 0 to 1, like so. But I want it, I want it to be slightly, I want it to be slightly tilted as well, so to do that, up at the global settings and controls you've got like an overall pan and tilt so if you want to tilt it a little bit you can tilt it and if you want to pan it on top of everything else you can pan it as well but what we're going to do is we're just going to tilt it back so it's at a jaunty angle so now it just spins like that okay that's what we're going to do in fact maybe i leave it upright it did look quite nice upright maybe we don't have it at a jaunty angle yeah, that's quite nice. But I'll, I'll tell you what I do want to do is I want to reverse the... Um, there you go, time reverse keyframes. I've just reversed the rotation. Now, I've got some funky stuff going on with my lighting. I don't know if it's my lighting or my normals, but you can see it's lit very well on one side, and on the other side it seems to be sort of odd. And I'm not entirely sure where that is, but I imagine it's probably being overly lit on one side and not lit at all on the other. Let's just find out if that is the case. Just gonna unsolo, on un unshy. Sorry, let's just see how intense these lights are by hitting T. Yeah, as I thought. Okay, so this one's up really high. Yeah. Okay, so that fixes pretty much everything. Let's just move that light position-wise. Let's just bring it forward or backwards. Back here looks nice. And the rim lighting. Let's move that as well. Let's make it forward. Maybe not that much. Cool. I like that. And this one. So we just adjusted the lighting to make it a little more pretty and we'll change as well the frame colour I think we'll make it yellow yeah nice and vibrant eh cool and remember same as always if you wanted to blow it up like we did before all you got to do is grab the 3D model animation thing which is this null object here 3D model animation controller and you can uh, random disperse sub objects, so let's go 0 0.01 cool now I was not expecting that that's nice, what about I mean it's a bit much but yeah I can remember that, that's pretty cool maybe we'll go from there and then we'll go forward 14 frames we'll set it to 0 so it sort of just bumps, okay? So we just want it to be a like, boof and come back to to being an actual logo. And then we'll wait and we'll go to, I don't know, 112 frames and then we'll keep it at zero. So we'll set a new keyframe there. So it's just gonna do that, boof, and then it'll do it again when we set this to loop. I always do my animations in, in little small sections like this. And then when I'm happy with it, what I usually do with my method is to go F9 to make it an easy ease and then I alt click and then I go, I've done this so many times guys, so don't be too uh, alarmed by all this Cody type stuff. It's really, really easy when you know what to say. It is literally loop out. What do I want it to loop out? A cycle, do I want it to loop, uh, offset? Do I want it to continue relative? So these are, this is in 3D packages, by the way, guys, just to translate things. This is called the out of range types and it's how the, the, the graph, the curve graph will continue when it goes out of the timeline or if it was to continue on looping forever, what's it going to do? So I've just told it to cycle, which means when it gets to the end, it's going to pretend it's now on frame 1, 2, 3, 4, and so, and so, and so on and so forth. So that's cool. It's a little quick. Let's just do 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 F9 it again, because I seem to have undone that. Okay, so, yeah, funky. Okay, what else do we want to animate? Random rotate? Nah. Random scale, yeah, let's let's bring that down a touch. So let's make it slightly smaller for a split second. Let's go to 
and then let's make it come back up to one and then let's make it stay at one and then let's do the same thing where we easy ease it and then copy and do an expression loop out cycle there we go and now it's just going to do that indefinitely forever so that guys is how you bring in your own 3d models cool so thank you guys uh, we're going to go on to the next segment in a moment and I'll see you in it.